Hello everyone, it's Justine. Today I'm gonna make the very first pop-up card that I've ever made on YouTube, so <laughs> welcome to the video. Anyway, not only am I gonna make a pop-up in the inside of the card, the outside of the card is going to be very beautiful as well. So I'm going to be making all of this card with the collection that is from Spellbinders. And the collection is called BB's Hummingbirds. It is just so pretty. <laughs> I know that this one will be a popular die set. Now, there's not only this pop-up, but there's also a number of other dies in that collection. There's a hummingbird with a lily. There's a delicate hummingbird like card front for a 5x7 card, which is so pretty. And that's what I'm going to on the outside of this card so just be excited about that one because I know I am there's this pop-up die that I'm using here there's also a hummingbird build a scene stamp set which is so pretty there is a hummingbird textures now that is a stencil so for all you stencil people out there there you go and then there's also a stamp set that is hummingbird sentiments and that is what I'm using on the outside of this card as well I'm just so excited to make everything I need to with it now I'm almost done die cutting out everything for this card. I just will finish die cutting out. I need to die cut these uh, little um, cover plates, if you will. So I'm going to do that on camera here as I talk about the rest of these and kind of hopefully kill two birds with one stone and hopefully not make a mistake as I try to multitask. <laughs> Now, if you're wondering what in the world just came on screen, this is a sidekick. It's a teeny tiny die cut cutter. I love using it on my desk when I don't have space on my desk to pull out my platinum. So here I am just cutting these pieces and you'll know what these are for in just a few minutes. But just speaking about the dies that I have here on my table, I have all of the flower ones arranged right here, all of the hummingbird pieces arranged right here and then for the pop-up motion you use this piece twice and this cover plate so I will explain everything do not worry just stick with me here um, as I die cut these out but um, I haven't glued anything together yet except I did put the eyes on the hummingbird because they were so tiny and I did not want to lose them so there's that all finished Okay, now that I have that finished, I don't know why I forgot to cut that out, but here I am. Okay, I'm going to work on the hummingbird first, so I'm going to put on the belly, so that's these pieces here, and then after that I'm going to put on the wings, and then finally the beak. <laughs> Is that the right word? I'm just kind of having a moment where I'm thinking in my head that's not the right word. It has to be a beak. It's a bird. If I'm not right, someone's probably like, this is the answer. Hello. You should know that. No, I, I don't know why. I th it's a beak. Yeah, a bird beak. That just sounds weird in my head. Anyway, I'm putting on the belly. It looks really cute. <laughs> it's so tiny. Look at that. I mean, I know my fingers aren't the smallest fingers in the world, but that's adorable. Okay, now we have the wings. I used this really pretty teal color. Now I'm going to choose to have the wings go on the outside where the etch die matches. So since the if the hummingbird was flat, I would put the wing on like this, not like this. So I'm going to put it on just like that. Just a tiny bit of glue will do. With my kindergartner students, I say dots, not lots. <laughs> Okay, now for the other side, I will do the wing just the same. And it's important not to glue the hummingbird together because then that kind of restricts it for the pop-up. So just a little FYI. All right, then I will glue on this black part, which I think is called the beak. I don't know. <laughs> this is a very delicate piece as well. Now I'm just going to try to figure out, yes, so I want the beak to be kind of going down like that. Thank goodness for Barely Art Liquid Glue that is going to dry clear for me because sometimes I have some smudges. 
I'm gonna put a little glue right where I did before and then I am going to glue the rest of the beak together because this part does not affect the pop-up at all. And I want it to be stronger together than weak apart. Sounds like a hidden message agenda, but you know, <laughs> it's true. We're trying to get these on and strong and staying put. Okie dokie, <laughs> the bird is finished, hooray. Now I'm gonna work on the flower. So on the flower, um, with assembly, you're supposed to just kind of round this off a little bit. There's um, a couple etched pieces and then you're supposed to glue these two flowers on the edges together. So I'm going to do that right there and just overlap and all of a sudden this becomes 3D. Isn't that so cool? All right, now for the next piece is the next smallest flower die. I'm going to do the same. Just kind of round these off and then, oh, you're supposed to bend this in half as well. So kind of line up the flower petals like this. And I think that really does help with like the flatness of it all. And also Spellbinders recommends you not using the thickest cardstock you have. So maybe like a, an 80, 90, 100 card stock maybe is kind of pushing it but I just used scraps that I had in my scrap areas of the right colors I wanted and didn't really worry about the thicknesses but if you're looking for a very flat pop-up I would definitely use a thin card stock if that's an option for you but if you don't really care then I don't know go thick <laughs> Okay, I'm going to fold this flower in half again, just like I did the other one, right about there. Why does that look off to me? There we go. It looked off because it was off. Okay. All right, then I'm going to glue this to the inside of the other flower. I'm just going to put glue kind of around this circle area and not glue kind of everywhere yet. I'm not gonna glue on the flower petals anyway, so that's fine, but I will line up these tab areas together, like so. If you are making this along with me, I would love to know what color is your flower and what color did you make your hummingbird? Because I, I'm pretty sure, I'm under the impression that hummingbirds do come in many different colors. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Who knows? I didn't really remember what the name of the mouth was, so <laughs> I'm not an ornithologist here, which I'm pretty sure means bird expert, so if I'm wrong about that, cool. <laughs> Okay, I'm just rounding out this middle piece again and adding glue, pushing it down. And this one I don't think I'm gonna bend in half just because it seems a little bit more delicate, but I think it will just bend with the card being folded anyway. So, I don't know, maybe that's a mistake. If it is, we're gonna find out soon and then you get to learn from my mistake. Aren't you a lucky duck? <laughs> okay, that looks about right to me. And then I'm going to glue again, just around the circle area and line up the tabs with the middle and large piece. Okay, now that all of my tabs are lined up, that's wonderful. And I'm going to, now that I'm done with this part of the flower, I'm going to just talk about the holes in the card. So I used this die right here to cut these little holes in my project. If your die cutting machine is only six inches wide, what you can do 
because this is a five by seven card so this is five inches you can take this piece and line it up like this and when it's folded it will cut through just like that if you have a larger die cutting machine like the larger platinum which i have which i just love you can go ahead and lay out your card like this and then lay on your die cut like so and then when you take it off it will have the same effect so depending on the die cutting machine you have there's kind of a method to the madness if you will but to line up and figure out where i wanted these holes to go before I assembled the bird, I just thought the hummingbird, I just knew that this was the tab. So I just thought, okay, I want the hummingbird to kind of be about there. And I took the the large hot pink flower and just said, okay, I think the hummingbird, just kind of guessing it would go kind of about there. So to me, that was kind of like a good guess. So you can probably still see it there, but I took a little bit of pencil just lined up my die and went from there you'll never see the pencil once i put stuff over it i'm sure anyway let's attach our pieces so i'm going to put my hummingbird in notice that it is not glued together that will affect the pop-up if you glue it together so <laughs> i'm going to put both of the tail pieces with the tabs into the tab holes like so and just close it like so and then i'm going to fold it back actually i'm going to put a little glue down first because i'm going to use my reverse tweezers to hold things into place i'm going to just fold it up and hold it like that i have dried glue everywhere i'm in crafting this morning so don't mind that and if you see paint or something on my hands I am a kindergarten teacher and we were painting frogs yesterday or like the kids were painting pictures of frogs so I might have paint all over my hands so if you see blue and green <laughs> that's that at least it's springtime according to our art projects but not actually the outside okay now you can take you know your reverse tweezers or something and have that hold but I think that it's secure, but I don't know. There, I use my reverse tweezers. <laughs> I'm just gonna check that the pop-up is functioning properly and it looks like it is. So now I officially have that hummingbird all popped up. Look how cute she is. Okay, now let's pop up the flower. I'm gonna do the same thing. Actually, I'm gonna get my glue ready on the outside again just a tiny bit dots not lots you know okay and then I'll just grab my flower and put the tabs in as well if your hummingbird was in the way like mine was I just took my card and rounded it up off the uh, the main line here just so it would pop up and not be in the way I don't want to damage any of those die cut pieces just a little tip for you. I definitely say that this flower was much more stubborn than the hummingbird. I don't know if that's because there are three tabs present for the flower and just one tab on each side for the hummingbird, but I probably will be using my reverse tweezers on this just to make sure everything is pressed down so the glue can have ah, so the glue can have a second to really hold the fort down for me. Okay, now that that's had a chance to dry, let's open it up and see the results. Oh, upside down. <laughs> so satisfying. There it is. So pretty. You can see from the side and the top. There we go. All right, now that the hummingbird and the flower has been popped up, I'm going to add the centerpiece of the flower. There's a tiny bit of etching on this die, so it got onto the paper, so I knew that you just fold it in half. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue down on the center of the flower here. And then with my tweezers, pop that pink piece in 
like so. Okay, as I have that middle flower being pinched in there, I'm gonna just cover up my tabs. So that's what these pieces are for. I'll just grab some liquid glue and add the tabs to the bottom piece. And good news is I have two reverse tweezers. So I'm gonna grab my other one and have that hold this bottom area. The cover pieces really are functional as holding the tabs but they're also kind of aesthetically pleasing just to have like a clean area for the tabs to be covered up. Now doing the first one I realized that it would be a lot easier folding this in half before you add the glue. Again learn from my mistakes. <laughs> okay here we go. Just gonna add this on right about there and clamp. This reminds me of when I go out into the garage and visit my husband in his kind of woodworking area and he's got these clamps <laughs> holding these wood. Now I am clamping, holding this paper. Same source, different thing, you know. Anyway, <laughs> there's, the, there's that middle piece all good to go and my tabs are covered. Now I'm going to add some leaves behind my flower just to give it a little bit more of a lively look. I'm going to use some of my Distress Oxides since they happen to just be sitting on my desk as kind of paperweights. <laughs> now the next part I'm going to use kind of like a pouncing method. I have, let's see, do I have scrap paper? Yes, I do. This is a, a piece that I used to cut out from the shaker card from last month. I am going to just add some glue down here and I'm going to pounce the leaves as I go. Because I'm not really, really looking for them to be like covered in glue. So there's just a tiny bit of glue there and I'll just kind of tuck it under and in. And then once I am done adding these, I'm going to let them dry and kind of step away from the camera for just a little bit because as you can see, they're kind of, they've been kind of pierced and I don't want any glue from the back of these leaves coming through the, the paper here and gluing my card shut together because this is supposed to be a pop-up and if it's shut together, it can't really pop up so there's that <laughs> you know I think I'm okay with just five leaves and maybe I'll put some down in the corner now you might be thinking well um Justine why are you using black as the card base usually it's white and or other light colors so people can write on it well yes you're right that's true but this card has a really fun front and you'll see that in just a minute after I've edited the video and let this glue dry but it has a really dark kind of front and I wanted the whole theme of that to kind of go throughout the card so I already know what I'm doing with this card and when I write inside it for the sentiment to personalize it I will be using silver Sharpie. All right, I'm going to leave these on here so everything has a little bit to dry and I will come back and show you the front part of my card. I am antsy pantsy waiting for this glue to dry and I was just looking at the pop-up and thinking, how can I make this even more pretty? So I'm going to cut a sequin in half and then glue that sequin on in the middle and yes, I realize that doing this is going to lengthen my dry time here, but such is life. And the reason why I cut it in half is because I want it to go on each side here of this flower. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right in there. Oh, cute. It looks like a heart. <laughs> and then slide this sequin in like so. Thank goodness for reverse tweezers because this sequin would have no chance without it. All right. Then, as I wait for everything else to dry, I 
again, cannot help myself, I'm going to pull out my Wink Estella pen and just shimmer up everything. Okay, now this is Wink Estella. If you don't know, it's a glitter shimmer pen. It's stunning, lovely, beautiful. I just adore it. So <laughs> I just love putting it on really everything and adding just a little bit of glitter and shimmer. And this flower is just looking really nice with it already. Sometimes it's hard for the camera to pick up all of the glitter and shimmer, but I promise you in real life it's there and it's shining, shimmering, splendid, as they say. <laughs> then of course the hummingbird gets some glitter as well. I'm just going to kind of follow the lines on its wings and just kind of flick up some got on the belly. Well, that is life. Who says you can't have a glittery belly? And then I'll do the other side as well. And at the tail. And I'm going to do these two leaves because I cannot help myself like I said before and I just love Wink Estella. Anyway, now I'm going to let everything dry and we'll do the front. <laughs> Alright, it's been a few minutes and I thought to myself, you know, I could work on the front as that dries. So here we are <laughs> working on the front. Now, isn't this so pretty? This is the 5x7 card front for the Hummingbirds with the Hummingbird collection and I just die cut it out in black and then used some Distress Oxides and didn't even do like that great of a blend job. Just looking at it, it's kind of like womp womp but you put this on it and it looks so pretty. But for the ink colors, that's why I had these on my desk, was the Shaded Lilac, Cracked Pistachio, Peacock Feathers, Pickled or Picked Raspberry, and Salty Ocean. <laughs> it was such a struggle saying those. If you only knew, thank goodness for video editing. Anyway, <sighs> I blended those out with my little blending brush and I had a little bit of an, a moment with some tape and instead of just ripping it further I just left it because when this is on it's going to cover it up anyway so that is life and I didn't really do like all that much blending on these pieces because I knew that those were going to be covered up with the black so let's get some liquid glue on the back of this and finish up this card front. I just really love the the softness of this and I just kind of can see, I don't know if it's a sunrise, a sunset, I don't know when hummingbirds are most active, but <laughs> we're just going to have a little story time here. Story time. Justine, I, <laughs> not really the biggest fan of moths. I know it's kind of a weird thing. I don't like moths. And once upon a time, I was in the McDonald's drive-thru and there was a hummingbird moth. I don't know if you've ever noticed one. I am not putting it on the screen here because that would mean I would have to Google it and save it to my photos and insert it in this video and have to look at it. Kind of cute, really gross in my opinion. Anyway, not looking it up if you want to. Caution. I, I don't know. I don't like moths. Anyway, and I was like, oh is that a hummingbird? And it was the morning time. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. And then I kind of looked at it some more and I was like, oh, it's a moth. No, thank you. And I actually just left the drive through. <laughs> I didn't even order. So yeah, moral of the story is I'm scared of moths in a, a weird phobia. Now we're closer. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Now that I have glue kind of everywhere and hopefully I made that gluing process a little bit more enjoyable. Okay, I'm just going to line it up with the back piece and hope for the best. I didn't do any of my ink blending on camera because I didn't know if that would be like the main thing people are looking for on this video. I'm assuming people are watching this video to see how to put that pop up together. But if you're interested in watching the ink blend in the future, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll do it in another video, but we'll just see, you know, I'd love to know your opinion though, because if you are a subscriber, I definitely want to know what you, what you like so I can keep making content for you 
and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, now what you can do with this dye is kind of go all out and add flowers and hummingbirds and just make it really pretty. I am going to do that on another video, so if you're interested in seeing me use this again, I'm actually going to use the same die here and two more 5x7 cards. So if you are a 5x7 person, do not worry. I have the cards for you. I also have another one, a five, another 5x7 five card coming out later this month that's using the Seahorse Kisses line from Spellbinders and Dawn. Okay, now that things are dry or they're as dry as my patience is going to allow, I'm just going to fold this in half and stick on this card front to the card front. Groundbreaking. <laughs> there we have it. And my tabs are totally covered up anyway, so that's fabuloso. Okay. Now I am going to add a sentiment. You can probably see it here. Do the small things with great love. I love that quote from St. Therese. If you know her, you love her. If you don't know her, you should. She's wonderful. Um, anyway, that is from the stamp set that came with this collection and I just wanted it to be something kind of simple and I wanted to put the sentiment kind of right about here so I went with like a light purpley fuchsia cardstock on here just to kind of tie things together and just kind of kept it simple because the inside of this card is really kind of outstanding and the exciting part so I just kind of left that be what it was. Now, yes, you can see a little bit of the shadow of the blue here and here, and, you know, I'm not mad about it. I think it's kind of fun, and this is a homemade card after all, so it doesn't have to be perfect, like a machine made it in a factory, but look at that, and can you just imagine with some silver or gold Sharpie, like, dear loved one, insert name here, blah, 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 love your name. I think that that would just be so... <laughs> sweet now the only thing I thought about was adding a little gem on the eyes so I'm gonna see what that looks like before I kind of go all in I have just been on like an eyeball kick with our kindergarten crafts we've been doing a lot of animals now that spring is coming and googly eyes are just everything in kindergarten they love googly eyes so the bigger the better as well they just they love the big ones <laughs> And I have all these tiny ones now. So in my brain, I'm like, oh, a googly eye. But, you know, maybe I won't do gems on the eyes, but just gems around the sentiment just to keep it kind of with the theme of a silhouette style background. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add just a tiny, these tiny gems kind of around my sentiment. We'll go there, there. We'll do five and keep it even. I need to figure out a different gem picker because this one just is not it anymore. It just isn't quite, I don't know. I've been kind of like working with the tip trying to get it pointy again, but it's just so blunt that it's just really not doing what I need it to do. And it's not releasing like, well, I guess that one was a pretty decent release, but... I don't know. I feel like it messes with my glue and then it gets blobby. But anyway, if you know a good gem picker, let me know. Maybe I'll just have to do some research on it. But anywho, let me know in the comments what you thought of this card. And I want to know what colors your flower and hummingbird are going to be if you're going to do this pop up. So just let me know in the comments and go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more videos with this collection and more content similar to this. I hope you had a great day. I hope you I hope you have a great day. I hope you learned something. And if not, maybe just enjoyed watching this and I don't know. Sorry if I'm a little kooky, but that's just my life and I'm kind of trying to put more of my personality into my YouTube videos and not be so stiff. So this is what you're getting, the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.